Welcome to Dropshot Diaries episode two. Firstly, I'd just like to say thanks for all the feedback you guys have given me on episode one. It's really, really humbling and it's great to get so many really good comments, so thanks very much, guys. Um, this episode is gonna be based on canal fishing and I'm down here in Hampshire on one of my local canals on the last day of the river fishing season. I'm fishing with a friend, my friend Paul, who has had some absolutely gargantuan perch from this canal. Um, I want to pick his brains really and find out what lures he's using, the different types of retrieve and what time of the day is the best to fish on for canals. So let's go and meet Paul. Well Paul, thanks very much for having me down here mate. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I have fished this canal before, I've not had great success on it, but we are on the last day of the season. Um, I've come to pick your brains, I know you've had some big fish on here. Yeah, I've done. Uh, I've been quite lucky, I've done reasonably well um, over the last 12 months. Loads of two pound perch, uh, roughly about six three pounders and a couple of weeks six ago I had a... Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I've just, I'm, I've, I've just been blessed, I've been so privileged to be able to catch these wonderful fish. But um, a couple of weeks ago, a uh, friend and I, Kieran, he was dead baiting for the pike and again I was just uh, rubber chucking and such as they call it and uh, I hooked into his fish and couldn't believe it, four pound four perch. Four so. pound four, that four is a four. monster. Yeah, so. On uh, the lure as well. Yeah, oh, on, on the lure is uh, oh, absolutely amazing. Um, J Flash lure, you yeah, can't, can't rate him. Oh, Owe a lot to my friend John for putting me on them actually. Uh, brilliant, brilliant. But, um, and what about uh, the drop shot? Have you actually done, you know, have you had much success on the drop shot? The drop shot shotting has been accounted for most of my really? most of my fish numbers. on here, yeah. Um, I'm relatively I'm really new to uh, lure fishing. Yeah. I'm 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 actually really new to fishing altogether. Okay. I only started a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, but yeah, drop shotting is Oh, it's uh, it's open new worlds. The the play the areas you can cover all along this canal. You know you can really finesse. You can really, you know you can really pick areas and dedicate time to that area. And you know I'm, I'm yeah. unfortunate enough that's how I've been I getting. Know, the fish. I do love the method. I like the roving, it's the brilliant. way you can move. Um, but I found with canals, and I think what what happens is people give up. Mm. They give up too easily. I, yeah. I know you've put the hours in, haven't you? You've put in some I've good spent, hours. I've spent a lot of time here. Um, my, I'm quite, I'm quite lucky through my job. It's uh, either work a, a, an afternoon, evening, or early, and well, I'm always asking for the uh, the evening shifts because I'd rather get down here for an hour. Yeah. My wife goes to work, and I pop down, get the <laughs> dogs ready. I pop down yeah. here. <laughs> so it's not a case of staying all day. There no. is a bite time. What would you say that bite time is really? I really like the hours of. Uh, it, just when lights breaking through a couple yeah. of hours dedicate a bit of time to one area you know find the snags find where these fish are you know are living or if they're not living you know these these perch these pike they're streetwise yeah they're you know we're in their back garden here now so you know that they know the game a lot of these fish so you've got to put the time in you've got to put the effort in you've got to keep ringing those changes and when you find that that niche you know when you've got them you'll get a few more. Now Paul, it's not just pike and perch you've had here. Um, I know a few weeks ago you came when it was pretty much freezing temperatures and you had something pretty special, didn't you? Yeah, um, I couldn't get into work. It was snowing. It was snowed over actually. So uh, I just, um, I come down here with the lure rod really. So just again, drop shotting. Drop yeah. shotting and it was with uh, one of the fish action attractors. Oh yeah, can't one go that, wrong with them. The yeah. one that you gave me. Yeah. So with the blue one, light blue just jigging away up and down the canal and just hit into something and it just took off and I thought, I instantly thought, oh, you know, carp or something? I know carp tape because I, I, if it's a pike, I thought it was a big one. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't um, I couldn't see it for a while because this the area of the canal that we're in, one end was frozen, the other end was frozen, the bit I was fishing in the middle by the bridge was yeah. the only place unfrozen. <laughs> So it took me under the ice, you know, it's, I only use like a little 1000 reel as yeah. well and, uh, you know, an ultralight rod. Took line, got a bit back in, took some more line and I was just uh, praying to get this fish in. It crossed my mind, is it a chub? I thought, nah. When I got it in the net, I weighed it just over four pound. Well, four, four pound, pound eleven, I think. I think it's something like that. I, could, you know, as a PB chub That's as well. That's a cracking you know? chub, yeah. yeah. I've targeted chub on stick and pin yeah. on rivers, and I'm, you know, I've had some lovely fish, been very lucky, but to catch one on the drop shot means everything. Brilliant. Yeah, means it's, everything. it's always nice with drop shot, and I find getting new species as well, you know.
she's not going to play ball, is she? <laughs> <laughs> Just caught this beautiful Jack on the J-Flash lure here at, uh, at our local canal today. It's uh, lovely colours, probably a couple of pounds as well, so uh, we'll get her back. I find when I uh, like to target the perch on the canal or actually any venue I fish at really, um, I'm always looking for cover and obviously bridges, um, moored boats that look like haven't been moved for a while. I find uh, you know they're great for holding perch and pike. Uh, like we run now, we're under a bridge here, and uh, even though this uh, place has produced a few fish in the past and a few nice fish as well, I may ask. There's, you know, you can't neglect places like overhanging trees, bushes, you know, um, anything that you can see obstacles in the water-wise, you know, just putting it past their front door, you know, may always just, you know, turn them on and just, you know, turn that predator instinct on and just attack, you know, whether it be hungry or they feel threatened or anything along the lines like that. Uh, this grip here is called, uh, I think it's called the pencil grip and uh, I've seen it in one of the weeklies and uh, one of the uh, top lure anglers, um, I've seen him doing it and it was all literally little taps, little finesse, you know, you've still got a good grip on the rod, you've still got your hand on the reel, I guess if you wish you could hold it at the back, but instead of putting your whole wrist into it or you know anything like that, you can literally just flick it like that and it's uh, very finesse, I, I really like it and sometimes you need that ounce of finesse just to, you know, get those fish to turn on and such. It doesn't all have to be an aggressive retrieve, even though, you know, that will again turn fish on, especially the predators, you know, it, you know, the slightest changes, the finesse, the smaller line, the lighter, the lighter hook even along the lines of maybe, you know, the, the gauge of the hook or the wire of the hook being that little bit thinner, going down a lure size, that's what's going to get you bites on a hard day. Uh, one of the reasons I love this uh, method, the, uh, the drop shot, is uh, simply because you can keep the lure in the kill zone for as long as you want basically and also you know gauge the depth of the lure by the drop shot weight or you know the SSG shot. Also as well I find that you can really find the ground, you can feel what's down there again with this light tip as well I can feel everything, I can go, I can feel a snag, I can uh, tell the difference between a snag and a bite obviously but also as well when I'm when I'm walking, if I'm going to say I'm covering a certain area, I only have an hour to fish, so I want to spend a bit of time at a certain area, I find that maybe, you know, uh, walking with the drop shot now and again, so just nice and slow, you're covering that area, you're putting that lure on that fish's face for a bit longer than you could possibly do with, uh, if you were normal jig fishing, you know, uh, you can keep that in the kill zone and hopefully you can, uh, that fish will that fish will, uh, will take our lure. Uh, just into our second fish now. Um, just had this lovely perch. Just uh, over a pound, I would uh, I would say. Had this on again a, a J Flash lure uh, from Arrowfish. A brilliant lures. Uh, retrieve a bit different from the pike. It was. Um, a uh, bit of a slow retrieve, uh, just uh, literally just knocking that lure just on the uh, on the deck, uh, drop shot drop shotting method. Uh, it's absolutely uh, absolutely beautiful. It's uh, playing the game with its fin up, and it's uh, definitely uh, definitely been chomping on those silvers. Uh, big uh, big bellied fish. We're absolutely privileged to catch this perch. It's the uh, last day of the season. This canal has a, uh, a closed season, unfortunately, but I suppose it does the uh, the fish really well. You can just see how big her stomach is there. Um, I would imagine full of spawn. So we uh, we won't hang about. We'll get straight back. Well, we've just uh, been lucky enough to have that lovely perch and a lovely pike. They've gone back nice and safe now. I did mention that we were using the J Flash uh, lures from uh, Arrowfish, and I've just got a bit of a got a close up of here. 
This one's the uh, this this is actually the the one that we use to catch them on the drop shot. Uh, as you can see, it's just tied onto the fluorocarbon. So as you can see there, the hook is slightly offset. Um, it's probably because I tied it wrong in the past, and that's the reason why it's uh, why it's like that. But I found that. Um, with it being offset, when I've uh, trialled it in a bit of a, in a shallow, clear area, you can actually see the uh, the lure acting a little bit differently. It sort of twitches to the side as well. Uh, you could probably do that anyway with your retrieve on the on the rod, but um, I just find it just gives it that uh, that that just that that little twitch more, and um, possibly it brings a few fish and. Uh, you know, but a hook rate is very good, so um, in saying that I've just lost a pike actually, so uh, I'll take that back a little bit. Uh, moving down, um, I just vary the length really. Uh, a friend of mine, Mark, he fishes at one depth from one depth only. Um, he, he's very consistent on this canal, but uh, however myself, I, you know, I like to vary, play it up. Um, he uses drop shot uh, weights, uh, where I, as you can see, where I will use two SSG. Now, with these two SSG, this allows me to put them together, uh, you know, like a bulk, as you would, and it would just act as a normal uh, drop shot weight. I also find it's a bit of finesse, but also as well, with the separation um, of the two weights, I find when you're bumping the uh, bumping the lure as such, it's sort of, once one weight hits, the other one hits, and you can sort of pendulum them, so it gives, again, I find it gives it that, in uh, shallower water, I find it gives a little bit more of a, um, a bit of a different kick as such. But yeah, it's, um, it works for me, you know, um, I do all manner of different retrieves anyway, nice and slow too. If I'm where, using a paddle tail lure, I'll uh, literally let the weights rest on the floor and I'll twitch a little, obviously if I've got a bulk set here, I'll twitch a little and I'll retrieve slow. So the fish is act, just keeping in that perfect, that killing zone as such. Uh, this is the uh, rod and reel I prefer to use. It's a uh, ultra light uh, rod, uh, but we'll talk about the reel first. Um, this is a Daiwa, uh, beautiful little reel, loaded with six pound Berkeley uh, nano braid. Um, it's so thin. It's uh, it, it's it's lovely. It's lovely. Uh, Knot strength's really good as well. Really great. Uh, this is a bit of a new toy for me actually. I'm normally using my major craft rod, but this is a uh, graphite leader. Uh, Calzanti EX. This is uh, this is um, an ultra light uh, rod. This is uh, 7.3, uh, 7 foot three, and it's 0 0.6 to 8 gram. This is. It's a uh, beautiful, absolutely uh, lovely rod. I uh, can't complain. I've caught some nice fish on it already, so uh, it's definitely serving me well. Okay, this is uh, the tip end of my rod. This is a. Uh, where the action all happens. Um, I love this, it's a total finesse rod this. Um, you can see the littlest knocks to, well, the biggest pull arounds. Um, the first day I got it, I was out here and I had a two lovely perch and I also had a, a PB uh, pike from here, just over eight pounds. Now on an um, eight pound pike on you know, six pound braid, six pound fluorocarbon, small hooks, but it was the rod, it just absolutely took everything. If I can just bend that around, it's just absolute beautiful. Okay, this is uh, my lure box and uh, I'm sure it's like everyone else's, it's just full of weird and wonderful things from what my friend Mark gives me. I don't quite know what that is exactly, but he likes to buy a lot of the American bass gear. Um, I've got here, so I've sh what I showed you earlier on, but a different colour, and it's also, this has got a paddle tail as well. Uh, John Wheeler put me on these, on these um, arrow fish. He done fantastic in the British Lure Angling Champs with them, so uh, I sort of copied him really, to be honest with you, uh, sort of uh, picked his brains and whatnot, and I've had loads of my big perch, if not all my big perch on, on these arrows here. This one here I particularly love, it's uh, lovely really good really strong as well really durable of course the eco gear ones here the grass minnows are absolutely brilliant you know uh, they're fantastic a load of little uh, little ones here from the tiny uh, sticklebacks to um, the the Berkeley 
Uh, sorry, the uh, the Berkeley minnows. I love these. Uh, here as well, um, I've got uh, a Savage Gear um, four play. A, a friend, uh, Jay uh, Jay Cr Crutchley from Lua Nuts, he taught me how to rig these. I was just rigging them the normal way as you would, so they were just like a swim bait. No, you know, they were really good. Um, but he, uh, you know, he says if you tried sort of jointing it on the side. I know a lot of his uh, guys uh, from his. Uh, from his team as such they're doing like that and they have excellent results and i've caught a couple of pike with it now so i am very impressed okay going over to here now i have uh, uh the these are isom worms these a lot of these i use for just realistically for the lrf in um i went with john to swanage uh we had a fantastic day and uh you know he, he taught me a lot and this is that's how he got me into these as well there's all sorts of weird and wonderful colors as a few prawns in there, as shrimp in there as well, which are fantastic. Well, Paul, I know the plan's not just to fish this canal. We're going to head up to uh, some other canals. You, you, you know some uh, decent canal fishing, don't you, around the area, local area, and a bit further. Yeah, a bit, a bit close, a bit further afield. Got some, uh, some good friends who fish, uh, you know, some amazing stretches of canals. So, you know, if uh, maybe a few beers will, uh, yeah. you know, they'll, um, they'll maybe put us on the right place. Brilliant. But if we put the hard work in. We'll find them anyway. Brilliant. Well, Paul, cheers. Nope. Thanks very much, and I hope to see you soon. And we'll, uh, Brilliant. we'll we'll carry on with some more drop shot fishing. No, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Well, you join me here today on what looks like a pretty miserable day, actually. We're having roaring winds at the moment going through. Unfortunately, Paul couldn't make it. He was meant to fish with me today. I'm on a different canal, but Paul couldn't make it. He's not feeling well. So I've brought none other than my dad. Um, he's not really a fan of kind of drop shot fishing, but he is holding the camera up for me right now. <laughs> and uh, he's going to be probably using some plugs and things like that for pike, um, which is absolutely fine. Doesn't bother me. That's great. Uh, I did have an email from a guy called Jake. Uh, so this is for you Jake about regarding drop shot diaries and I said send us your feedback and any suggestions you want and he said can you do drop shot fishing um, with a swivel as, as opposed to tying the Albright knot from your braid to your fluorocarbon he said can you use a swivel so today this is for you mate um, I've basically got there's my braid mainline braid there there's my fluorocarbon and I've got a kind of small really small almost micro swivel type thing really really small swivel i don't know the size but you can see there it's really small um so that's what i'm going to be doing today and this is really for for you to uh to prove to you that you can fish with a swivel it doesn't spook the fish um they're more interested in the business end which today i'm going to start with the white fish action lure um which we now have on our website which is great these i love these lures this is probably my go-to lure for drop shot fishing as whenever I turn up to any new venue or even a venue that I know this is the first lure that's coming out of the lure box um, this is the Attractor Shad DS so uh, let's give it a go weather's not looking great bit of sunshine coming through but 
at the moment it's pretty bad so we'll give it a go and see what we can get. It is a tough day's fishing, but I'll tell you what guys, the old attractor shad, look at it there. Because these are absolute perch killers, these things. There's the, there's the lure there, just a little three inch attractor shad. And here's a nice little chubby, small, but look at the belly on that. Chubby little perch. A fine fish on a really tough day's fishing. I've only had one other small fish, but I'm definitely going to give it a go. We're, we're only about halfway up the stretch of this canal at the moment. So I will be getting that tractor shad out again. And staying with that white lure. It's very, very windy. It's tough conditions. But it's paying off putting the out, putting the time in and putting the casts in. Well here's another totally awesome tip, as you can see behind me here is a traditional canal boat, the kind of long pencil shaped boats, now they're usually made of uh, steel so they sit really low in the water because they're heavy, but you can also get boats that are not made of steel, they're a lot lighter and they have that v-shaped hull, just like this one, well this boat behind me here is a fiberglass boat, which, is, which means basically it's a lot more buoyant in the water, so it sits up higher in the water which in turn gives you all that space under there where perch can hide out. So don't miss those tricks when you're going around different canal boats and different boats on the edge of the canal. Look for the ones that have lots of space underneath them because that's more than likely going to hold a perch. Well, a really good tip guys is I'm here by the traditional canal boats and this is, to me, screaming out perch. Um, one thing you can look for is check whether, a lot of the time they have little chimneys on them. You can check if there's smoke coming out the chimneys or if there's lights on. That tends to mean that someone's aboard, obviously. But the older ones, the ones that don't have that, they're looking a bit worn, a bit rough. They've got kind of weed and everything growing up the side. That's probably gonna be more likely to hold fish because there's not been much activity on it. So the fish feel a bit more confident and basically it's their sanctuary underneath. So just a little tip to watch out for. Here we go folks, fish of the day right by a canal boat, which is a classic perch spot. What a beauty. That's an awesome, that's an awesome perch, I'm not gonna lie. That's definitely my biggest perch of the day today. And this attractor shad is absolutely killing it. Uh, it came a real slow retrieve, tweaking it one inch little jiggles right on the, uh, the basically the stern of this boat, right at the back and it just came out really slowly. I even saw the take, which was awesome. Came out really slowly and just gulped at it. But what a fish. Really, really chuffed with that. Beauty. Guys, I was filming Mike doing his drop shot diaries, and you know me, I had to have a rod as well. And he's up there around messing around the bars like he is with those fish action lures. <laughs> Look and I've got at that. this deep running plug there, looks like my Barramundi plug is not, and I've got an absolute lump that hit me. I thought it was a jack pike, to be honest. What a fish, absolutely superb. That's and look at the colours of his tail, is absolutely bright red. We're going to weigh this one, I reckon this is very, very close to two, might even be a bit bigger.
Drop. It's the end of the day, and there's another fish in the net. This is probably the biggest of the day for me. It's certainly a chunky one. It's, uh, it's got a decent belly on it. Look at that beauty. What a beauty, full of spawn there, as you can see. Uh, that, is a, uh, that is probably, I'd say, biggest for me of the day. That's over a pound, at least. Um, on, of course, the attractor shad. This time I've gone for the kind of purple with uh, blue glitter in it. You just cannot go wrong with this lure. Absolutely awesome. Quality fish, quality little scrap on the on the ultralight rod. What a beauty of a fish. We'll get a quick picture and then we'll get him back and I think I'll give it five more minutes probably. Awesome. Well people, no sooner had I released that perch than Pullen Senior has come in himself with a plug. He couldn't resist because I did lose a pike earlier in this same swim. And what do you know, he's onto the pike. He's just hanging his, his spat one hook where I've messed about. He could come off. He's down there and the, and the bottom hook just got him under the chin. Lucky or what? I'm going to walk him down this way where it's a bit closer to the water. It's too steep here. This is supposed to be Drop Shot Diaries. You're stealing my series. <laughs> Pull and plugging, it'll be called. <laughs> Do you know what? As he is like that, I think I'm, I might not even bother with the, uh, with the with net. Because if you've got that loose treble there, it's going to be absolutely flying. Let's walk him down here. But the thing is, if that treble gets in the net, and it twists up, the fish twists up. You can have a god awful mess. And you can't get the pike unhooked, so I'm gonna just gently lift this one out. Always be careful of the trebles. And always be ready. Look, he's just hanging. He's, just, he's actually dropped the hook, the front one. Here he goes, he's gonna come out. Oh, he's still a jumper. Now, if he comes off now, I don't mind. Hold it there, buddy. Don't come out yet. Don't come out yet. Don't come out yet. See, notes I come in from around the back of the fish. Now I've got him. As they say in America, his ass is grass. That was lucky, lucky, lucky. Just beware of that extra hook because he's just hooked in there. So get him up on the way, Matt. Get him unhooked and we'll show him to you. There we go, guys. That's what I call being a cameraman for Mike's Drop Shot Diaries. I love it, me. But I was lucky because he did tell me where the fish was. Let's get it back. Mm -hmm.